Welcome to another journey into the power of the harvest with Pastor Charles Ellis. Power of the Harvest offers biblical answers to today's questions, all found in the Word of God. Allow Pastor Ellis to guide you through the Word as he teaches with clarity and transparency so that you can not only understand, but begin practicing the Word of God so your life can be forever changed. Now, listen to today's teaching on the power of the harvest with Pastor Charles Ellis. May God bless each and every one of you. Pastor Charles Ellis here at Harvest New Life Church here in the city of Dallas. It's uh, been a long night for me at my uh, place of uh, work. And uh, here this morning again, they bring that what the Word of God has given me to give to you unto the kingdom of God. Now, we're going to be in the book of Luke chapter 11. It's, it's something that's touching my spirit, talking about the area of prayer and the season in which we're in. How most of us go about each and every day. Uh, we receive what God has to say from a physical, but in the spiritual, we're still kind of lacking some of the things that we actually have to deal with to help us move forward. And what God is really declaring us to do. You know, it's almost amazing when you think about the process when, when God delivers you out of one circumstance or one situation. It seems like you don't really understand it, it was through the prayer and the power of God only who brought you out. It wasn't through any of your physical action, any of your educational action or anything. It was through God's rich mercy and grace that allowed you to be delivered from whatever the enemy tried to alienate you in and try to keep you bombarded in to make you feel opposite of what God has declared already in your life. We all know that the court of the kingdom of God, he said he has given us dominion. He's given us power. He gives us a little tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And we go into this word today with the theme of this one saying, Lord, teach us. Because some of us has not yet been taught. Even though we go through destructions and we go through processes and uh, losing one another, losing stuff, losing things, going to certain civil case situations. And we get just to the point we come out of it. But we don't realize and understand we, we, we're getting ready to go right back into a natural storm. Something a little bit more greater than we ever have been through before. So I, I advise you to really take notes on this particular teaching on this uh, uh, morning and what uh, Christ is about to bring through the kingdom of God. And, and as the music solidifies itself, I want to go ahead and pray and get started and move forward as we get ourselves prepared in this word. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to come before your throne, for the opportunity to know to you, Father God, that everything and all things are possible. Father God, it's been a word that we have decreed. It's been a word that's been declared through the power, through the revelation of the Holy Spirit. That even as we come forth, Lord, with the characteristics of love that you have implanted in our hearts, before the foundations of the world, Father God, we ask you, Father God, to give us that model of wisdom and knowledge and understanding that you so desire for us to have as we move forth with that what you have declared from the kingdom of God. I thank God for the woman of God, uh, my co-pastor Patty Ellis. And all that she has done and us coming together to continue to do the work and fight the good fight. And even though oppositions continue to come from every angle and every side. But we stand firm in our faith and we believe according to the will, the purpose and the power of God. That we know no demonic weapon has got the power to come against that what God has preordained or created to be. 
The word of God decrees, declares, only I know the thoughts and only I know the plans that I got for you, Pastor Ellis and Patricia Ellis. And that is good of evil to give you an expected future, along with the beautiful young children you have, along with your grandchildren, along with your beautiful young daughter, who I have already preordained into the life to do the work that I called her to do. Even as she stands still and begin to see the revelation of what that which you have done, she will go and do greater also. So, Father God, we thank you this night, this morning, excuse me. We thank you for the opportunity to come before your throne once again. Lord, as the breath blows and breathes uh, in our veins, Father God, just to know that through you, Father God, everything and all things are possible. I thank you for my mother, Father God. I thank you for her strength. I thank you for her health, even at her own age. As she lies somewhat in an area of affliction. Nobody knows the thoughts and the things that you go through. But I tell you, man and woman of God, as we pray, Father God, we break every negative voice, every negative command that comes to every negative soothsayer. We loose in the name of Jesus. We declare the word according to the kingdom, according to the power of the mercy and grace that you have bestowed upon us as being your children to move forth in that which you called us to do on this day. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray, Lord, amen. Well, let's get right into the word and hear what the word of God has to say that's concerning this word that's coming from the kingdom of God. As I said before, for those who are going to be with us on this morning study, this study, then uh, some of the studies I do is not taking you through an extreme, ex uh, what you call historical depth. Of, of, of most people feel that I can get all the depthness, I can suck all the juice out of that what I need to get out of but I still don't yet learn how to love you know sometimes you can gain all the world you can get all the degrees you want you can get all the books you want to read you can go all the places that make you feel a little bit more popular than you think you ought to be but the word of God declares and decrees according to the book of Galatians a man should not think of himself or a woman should not think of her or himself as being more highly than the author thing now it, it is nothing wrong with you thinking high but he said just don't think more conceited don't make you don't make don't make yourself feel that you're a little bit more better or a little bit more educated than another person who stands beside you because everything lays in the wisdom and the power of God's hand and you are created and engineered by him and he's the one created you. He's the one enable you to gain and get the wealth. So as I say all the time, with no kind of discrepancy behind it, don't get it twisted. Because, you know, you're not the master. The master is in the heaven above. You're just the puppet on the string. And you're commanded to do what he calls you to do. It goes over in the book of uh, Luke chapter 11. If you turn over the book of Luke chapter 11, it talks about Jesus teach us to pray. It talks about the area of teaching and on prayer and and it goes on in the book of Luke 11, and it starts off in verse 1. It said, one day Jesus was praying. Now, this is a model information that we have showed. When we think about just that first part of Jesus was praying, it deals with the process of how we as men and women got all to our, our, our children, our relatives, whoever it may be, ought to see us pray. To know that where our dependency comes from the kingdom of God. It goes on over in the book of Luke, chapter 11. Say, one day Jesus was praying. We're reading from the New Kings and from the New American Standard Version. And we're going to jump back and forth here in a little of the uh, area of, uh, of, of the uh, NIV. And we're just going to move around to certain Bibles dealing with the area amplified. And whatever God is going to give us this afternoon, this morning, we, we're going to move forth and we're going to hear that's what the Lord has to say that's coming from the kingdom. Say, one day Jesus was praying in a certain place now sometimes we think about the area of a place the same thing Christ done he does the same thing Abraham does wherever Abraham went wherever Abraham admonished and acknowledged the Lord he sat there and he made an altar the Bible declares and decrees that 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 Jesus he judged uh, he, he, he admonished to do the same thing that he taught Martha to do with the fellowship with the father which he told Mary, which he taught Mary how to do, that to pray, that when he ceased into one place, his disciples said to him, you know, Lord, teach us to pray. We see all the success that you're doing and the miracles you're doing that's coming from your father. Evidently, that must be a major connection here. And it's all got to do with praying. You know, the word of say, God said, talking about strange when it's like fiery trials, dark circumstances, situations come against you. But when you look at a person who's, and I don't use this word in a way that is harmful. Anyway, you use a person of ignorance. 
You know, they lean to what they feel their own understanding is. They don't acknowledge Christ in all his ways, but they want to mingle and match the word of God in terms of what a natural understanding. And they want to set the natural understanding on the level of spiritual understanding. When Christ calls you to do a work, when Christ calls you to be able to step to the level in which he wants you to be in, it's never, it's never declared that Christ says you got to come down to your level, uh, 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 bring his level down to where you are. No, you got to come up to his level. In other words, you got to upgrade your thinking. You got to move to an area as a little bit more higher than the university paper on the wall, than the books you get in your cupboard, the things you have hanging around that make you feel a little bit more superior from the what you call the world standard point of view. And you know, the one of the words that Pastor Ellis always used, you know, the majority is not always right. We see the election polls. We see different kind of polls that goes on around the world. And we see people who sat before the television. And this is what they acknowledge in terms of what they feel is true. And I declare by the word of God that the majority is not always right that even when Jesus came into the land I was standing in the book of Luke 11 but I want you to I want you to hear something here as Pastor Ellis began to explain these things to you how it's so easy to fall in what we call ignorance mean disobedient falling in the rebellion of God's word we see so many errors in the Bible where the ministers or, or people of God or chosen men of God fall in rebellion they paid a heavy price and I'm telling you, man, the woman of God, that's what is going to get you to fall short of what the glory of God has declared in your life. It's called vain glory. Rebellion is nothing but vain glory. Vain to the point of not believing and declaring what God has decreed in your life. He talks about it in the book of Jeremiah. Now, we're going to stay in Luke 11. But I'm going to venture you because most of you are only designed to have what you call a one-track mind in the understanding of what you're doing. If it's teaching on the historical point of view, you tend to stay there. But God's word is illuminating word. It moves up and down all around. It convicts. It arrests. Wherever it targets you at, this is what it's designed to do. In this particular passage, we're dealing with the area of Christ. When one of the disciples came to him as Jesus was praying, he said, Lord, look, teach us how to pray. Teach us how to pray. All the information I gave you concerning what Christ has given on to his people to be able to understand and realize that man doesn't live by what you call bread. And I'm talking about mammon. I'm talking about the aromatic, the aromatic word of what, what, what money. In other words, he says that man should not live by bread alone, but he man should not live by, by two masters. He should serve one. And he, no matter of fact, he should serve. He should, he should love one. He was, he was, he was serve one and hate the other. He talks about how men live by money, money is mammon. He talks about the aromatic word of money, how, how men want the world, how they want, they deny Christ, but they want the world, all the pleasures that the world has to give for them. And I'm telling you, it's almost like you're living, you, you're living on earth, but you got one foot on the banana peel and you got one in the grave and you're waiting to fall down. I can hear the spirit of some negative thing in the spirit saying I don't believe they're listening to this you know what you ain't got to listen to it you can turn the radio off right now and you can go about your own daily work but I'm telling you lady man and woman of God there's a day coming that you got to meet the casket you got to meet the dirt and you got to understand where your soul is going to go from this day and you got to say hello to my I don't believe they're listening to it you know what you ain't even in the ability on the level to try to check this out you shouldn't even be checking this as a matter of fact you can go on back to the world and what you are right now and go and believe what they're telling you but I'm telling you one day that's going to be a division in your life you're going to go to the dirt and your soul's got to go to a different place jesus declared and his disciples told him lord look teach us how to pray as he says in luke 11 one day jesus was praying he said he was praying notice the inclements that he was praying that means he already ceased from praying and the disciples came to him after he was praying not while he was praying but after he was praying and they asked a certain question lord lord teach us to pray they went to the certain place where Christ was playing. And they said when he had finished, one, just one of his disciples, I mean, one disciple spoke in reference to every one of the other disciples, said, Lord, said to him, Lord, teach us. I'm speaking in reference, in retrospect to the group. Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. And it's an amazing contrast when we begin to look at that verse 1. It talks about in verse 1 how Jesus admonished the world of praying just like he taught Mary to pray, just like he taught Martha to pray. But they say in the position where Jesus began to cease and he'd be finished to praying, it, elevent, it, it, it evidently excuse me, noted the fact that it caught the attention of one of the disciples and how they follow Christ around each and every day during the course of the time that he was here on earth during the 32 years or 31 years of his ministry 
Christ declared and decreed that everything he spoke comes from the kingdom of God. Let's move here. Let's take it to some information here. Let's let's kind of get you here because I you know sometimes you got to.